As soon as I finished reading this chapter of the manga, I knew this day would eventually come. In My Hero Academia, once Deku returns to Yue after he went solo for a while hunting escaped villains, a hero from the United States flies to Japan. While literally riding atop one of a squadron of advanced stealth fighters in order to defeat Shigaraki. She has the power to rewrite the rules of anything she touches as long as she invokes its name. She is the current top ranked hero from the USA, Star and Stripe. The entire fight between Shigaraki and Star and Stripe feels like the conglomeration of every flaw and mistake in My Hero Academia. The conclusion of a poorly written symphony. And there are several things which become abundantly clear by the end of it. Number one, by this point in the story, Horikoshi had written himself into a corner by making All for One far too powerful for almost anyone to deal with. Number two, Horikoshi has demonstrated that the rules surrounding how quirks work, where the fictional science of the world is concerned, is somewhere between vague and non-existent. And number three, everything outside of Japan is a blank empty canvas, which Horikoshi throws characters and bits of story at whenever he needs to solve a problem. But the biggest problem with the Star and Stripe story arc is Star and Stripe herself. For anyone who doesn't read the manga, major spoilers ahead. First of all, let me show you every single way Star used her power during the fight. She calls the atmosphere in front of her, out to a distance of 100 meters, to disappear. She held a laser beam in her hands like it was Play-Doh. She made it so that Shigaraki's heart would explode if he moved. That last one didn't work though, more on that later. She solidified the atmosphere to become a gigantic version of herself so it could crush Shigaraki with its fists. She then had her allies shoot the giant version of her with laser beams and concentrated those laser beams into a single lance, which giant star used to stab Shigaraki. She controlled the flight paths of numerous rockets to slam them into Shigaraki. She tried to make her body immune to decay. That one didn't work. And finally, she made her quirk revolt against all other quirks in the same body. So, Kathleen Bates. The hero known as Star and Stripe. What is she? The answer to that question reveals the biggest mistake that Horikoshi has ever made. Because Kathleen Bait is a reality warper. And we can see examples of this type of power in Marvel and DC and other fictional universes. It's a suite of abilities with larger than life applications. Manipulating time and space dimensional travel, altering the natural order of things. And Horikoshi, imaginative as ever, uses it to make Star hit a man really, really hard. The reason is obvious. All for One slash Shigaraki had become far too powerful. There's no way anyone was going to beat this guy at this point. So, Horikoshi creates a convenient to get out of jail free card in the form of a woman who can break the very rules of causality, who then makes her quirk, New Order, destroy the other quirks in Shigaraki's body, giving him an incredible nerf and somewhat depowering him, and then she dies once his purpose is fulfilled. But with her power, she could easily have killed him. Yes, granted. She can only maintain two rules at a time, and her rules are severely limited where living creatures are concerned. But she gave her quirk a rule to attack other quirks, something that can only really work on a conceptual level. She not only gave herself the ability to hold a laser beam, she was also completely unharmed by it, and by changing its shape and properties, she showed that she could alter fundamental forces of nature. So, she could stop time in an area around Shigaraki, or at least, slow it to a crawl. Within the same area, she could induce heat death, lower the temperature to absolute zero, change the atomic mass of air molecules to have all kinds of wild effects. Hell! Being an asset of the United States government, one would expect that teams of experts, analysts, and scientists would have studied her court to figure out its absolute limits, 
and how she could fully utilize it, perhaps even in tandem with other people's quirks. Now, there's nothing wrong with introducing a superpower simply to solve a narrative issue. This very thing was done with Eri. There's nothing wrong with introducing a character who has limited narrative use before being thrown away. This was essentially done with Lady Nagant. There's nothing wrong with depowering a character. This was done with both Aizawa and partially with Merkel. But those were all scenarios filled with new ones. Various narratives coming together to tell a story greater than the sum of its parts. When you remove the nuance and congeal these plot points, a new throwaway character, a world-breaking superpower, and a depowering a character, and its one and only purpose is to make your story drive over a speed bump, then you've not only lost the plot, you've also revealed the cracks in the rest of your story. You can see the squandered potential with how limited and unimaginative the use of New Order is. You can see that Horikoshi was trying to force a convenient conclusion by having New Order not work on Shigaraki for the laziest reason. Because All for One and Shigaraki combined formed a new entity so he no longer identified as either person. But the greatest example of how lazy and rushed this retcon was is when New Order begins tearing Shigaraki's body apart. And All for One attempts to find someone to give the quirk to. He has the quirk now, and he knows how it works. So why doesn't he just change the rule that Kathleen set before she died? There is nothing in the story or plot that suggests he can't just do that. So why not just rewrite that rule? Horikoshi was in such a rush to finish this quick fix of his narrative, that he forgot the rules that he himself put in place for his world. Simple as that. And it certainly doesn't help that those very rules are vague and undefined. This ends up making the introduction and death of Star and Stripe completely pointless. How pointless, you might ask? Let's put it like this. How much do you want to bet that Horikoshi will completely forget that All for One gave new order to some random nobody? And in the event that Horikoshi remembers that New Order exists, how much do you want to bet that it will have so little impact on the future narrative that it will be almost irrelevant? Now about those cracks in the story I mentioned earlier, we'll be analysing those in the next video. While, as I promised in part 1, comparing My Hero Academia to Avatar, both the Aang and Korra series. Stay tuned for that video in about 4 weeks, I need a little more time for research, and I'll see everyone next time.